Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Ingram Micro Cisco WebEx Teams Overview. You've got today, you've got myself, Arun Rivani, I'm the, channel, uh, the uh, National Sales Manager for Cloud, and we've also got Rajvid Shah, who is our Solutions Architect for Cisco. Today, we're going to take you through an overview of uh, the Teams from Cisco and that solution. Formerly you may know it as Cisco Spark, but obviously it's gone through a rebranding exercise over the last few months. So we'll give you a quick overview of uh, Cisco WebEx Teams. We'll give you a quick demo of what it all looks like, then uh, that will sit with Rovich. And then after that, we'll take some questions. Feel free to include those in the chat function uh, you've got there in the system. And we'll also address those at the end of the uh, WebEx demo. Then you'll hear from me uh, with a quick overview of how you actually place the order through the Ingram Cloud Marketplace. Some of you will already be familiar with that particular platform, but those of you that haven't, it's no problem. I'll give you a quick overview of how that works, the look and feel, and then also how you can uh, take advantage of that working with uh, the sales team should you wish to place an order. So just a quick uh, introduction to Rabbit Shah. So Rabbit has been with Ingram for many years, is a solution architect in our Cisco practice, very, uh, proficient in uh, this particular technology, so we're excited to have him here to give us that overview, and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Rutledge. Cool. Thanks, Arun. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ruthwidge, as Arun mentioned. I'm a Cisco Solution Architect at Ingram Micro. Uh, I've been doing the Cisco's collaboration portfolio for the uh, last three to, three to four years, and I've been with Ingram Micro for about eight years. Um, so, as Arun mentioned, we, uh, Today, we're going to cover uh, WebEx Teams overview, and uh, after a quick quick overview, we'll actually go through the demo of you know how the WebEx team app looks like, and uh, uh, there, uh, like uh, for someone uh, for those who haven't really seen the new WebEx Teams app, uh, there's a lot of uh, UI changes that has happened in the last uh, several weeks. So we'll actually go through that as well, and uh, we'll demonstrate, you know, how um, the application and uh, the the portfolio can actually help uh, in your day-to-day -day activities and uh, help help your uh, end users as well. Uh, so let's quickly deep dive into um, the portfolio. So um, some of you might be uh, uh, might be knowing WebEx Teams by uh, you know Spark. So uh, Cisco recently, and this was uh, back in April of this year, they uh, rebranded uh, Cisco Spark application to WebEx Teams. Uh, and we'll actually go through a uh, few, um, uh, you know, few uh, discussions around, you know, why that happened, uh, what was the main reason why the rebranding happened. Uh, but yeah, pretty much WebEx Teams is uh, now the new uh, Spark application, uh, and it's part of the new Cisco WebEx suite, uh, and that pretty much covers meetings, team collaboration, as well as calling. Uh, so let's have a quick uh, overview of you know what Cisco's cloud collaboration strategy has been in the recent months. So if you really look at uh, the strategy, there are three key uh, tenants that Cisco has uh, proposed going forward. So the first one is one cloud platform. Um, and what I mean by one cloud platform is uh, in the past, there used to be two separate platforms. So Cisco used to have their own data centers which hosted uh, WebEx application, which was pretty much the traditional uh, video meetings, so you know, web uh, audio and video conferencing. Um, they also had a separate uh, platform um, for uh, Spark application, uh, and both of those platforms weren't actually connected by a similar backbone. So WebEx essentially was connected to uh, you know an IP backbone that was pretty much really well optimized for uh, video meetings. Uh, whereas Spark wasn't really connected to that particular backbone. So what they've done in the recent months uh, since the announcement uh, was uh, pretty much it's one integrated cloud platform. Um, so they are actually sharing the same common backbone uh, uh, 
IIP backbone, uh, which uh, pretty much means that uh, whether you join a meeting from WebEx Teams or WebEx Meetings app, you're going to have a similar look and feel and similar experience, essentially. Um, another key tenant is uh, core experience. So whether you join, uh, whether you join um, a meeting or uh, a meeting from, uh, you know, WebEx, from uh, from a device, uh, say for example, a laptop or uh, a smartphone, uh, you you or even a Cisco uh, video endpoint. Pretty much, you get a similar core experience, and we'll actually demonstrate uh, when we show one of the WebEx Teams uh, app uh, when we're going to demo that particular thing over here. Uh, and one brand name. Um, and the, the reason why they actually went with one brand name is uh, WebEx was uh, quite, uh, you know, quite common among enterprise customers. Uh, pretty much, if you ask uh, ten customers, um, out of ten customers, you know, eight out of ten customers pretty much knew WebEx brand. Whereas with Spark, it was. Uh, a little bit hard to, you know, differentiate that particular brand. So that, that's why, um, you know, everything has been now rebranded to WebEx. Um, so even some of the endpoints that you might have seen around uh, Spark boards, uh, Spark Room Kits, are now rebranded to WebEx uh, board and WebEx Room Kit, for example. Uh, this is just a quick slide showing, uh, you know, the last 10 plus years of uh, market domination by WebEx. So once again, it's one of the most widely adopted and uh, trusted meeting services on the market. Uh, Cisco, as far as I saw the last report, they still hold about 50% of the market share from a meetings perspective worldwide. Um, and you can just have a look at the numbers. You know, the number speaks for itself. I mean, 116 plus million meeting attendees per month. Um, six plus billion meeting minutes per month. Uh, that, that's quite staggering. I mean, like, uh, there's no other competitor that actually does this kind of scale. And 30 plus meeting, uh, million meetings are hosted per month. So, um, so let, let's quickly go through the actual offering that uh, the WebEx uh, suite has to provide. Uh, so once again, as I mentioned, uh, it's a single uh, branding. Uh, it is a cloud suite of products and services for secure business collaboration. Uh, it essentially has got three key offerings. You got meetings, uh, which is your traditional uh, web video and audio conferencing. Uh, so that's uh, Cisco WebEx meetings. Uh, you got team collaboration, which we are going to talk about uh, today. So that's uh, Cisco WebEx Teams. Um, uh, formerly known as uh, Cisco Spark, and you also got uh, calling, uh, cloud-based calling, uh, which has been rebranded to Cisco WebEx Calling. Uh, just to let you guys know, uh, WebEx Calling, unfortunately, is not available in Australia at this moment of time. Uh, probably we're looking at a 6 to 12 months uh, time frame for the calling to arrive in Australia. Uh, at this moment of time, it's only available in uh, uh, United States. Um, yeah. So, and and once again, uh, this uh, suite of products and services are backed up by uh, Cisco's award-winning devices. So, uh, you might have seen some of Cisco's uh, video endpoints, like you know WebEx boards, uh, WebEx uh, Room Kit, WebEx. Uh, uh, you know, WebEx devices. Uh, all, all those particular devices uh, really well integrate with uh, all those three key uh, services as such. Uh, it is secure, so, you know, once again, uh, the data centers are quite secure. Once again, any of the messages that uh, are in transit or at rest are end to end encrypted, pretty much. And uh, it's basically backed up by a powerful cloud architecture, um, which, are, which is pretty much a microservices-based uh, cloud architecture platform. So let, let's quickly go through, you know, why another uh, collaboration tool. Um, if you really look at uh, a normal day-to-day -day activity of, uh, of, of, of an employee within an organization, 
they actually have to go through uh, and play around with a lot of uh, you know disjointed collaboration tools and that could be uh, obviously bring your own device and corporate devices uh, so those collaboration tools have, uh, disparate collaboration tools have to work on uh, different devices uh, altogether um, employees they normally spend uh, the day uh, transitioning between those uh, applications so uh, you can think of, um, you know, Microsoft Outlook for email, uh, pretty much for voice. They might be using Jabber or Skype for business. Um, for scheduling joining meetings, they might be using Cisco WebEx. Um, uh, and the sharing content, they might be using uh, some uh, another third-party tool. So ju just by uh, transitioning between those different uh, applications as such, uh, you know, employees may actually lose a lot of uh, their productivity. Uh, just to manage their workflow. So what Cisco has done is they've actually built up an integrated suite that enables collaboration without friction. And we'll actually have a, uh, when we uh, when we go through the demo, we'll show you know how easy is it to actually manage all the workflows from a single application as such. Um, and that's not to say that it's a closed-end platform. Uh, pretty much um, the WebEx suite is an open platform, so it really integrates well with you know all the third party workflow based uh, applications as, as such. so uh, ex examples could be you know uh, salesforce um, you know trello all those uh, business applications um, cisco webex teams uh, integrates really well with, with those applications um, and as I mentioned, it's a team-based uh, collaboration tool. Um, you, you're looking at a continuous team work uh, in a secure uh, virtual workspaces, and pretty much uh, those applications, uh, the actual application is consistent across any devices. So whether you install the WebEx team app on your laptop, on your uh, smartphone, or on Cisco devices, Cisco-based endpoints, uh, it's exactly the same look and feel. Uh, so essentially what it provides is uh, it, uh, it, it is a instant messaging. Uh, it, it does have instant messaging. Uh, it does do file sharing, uh, does meetings as well, and uh, whiteboarding as well, and the video conferencing uh, all together in one application. So just, I'm just going to cover a couple of uh, key, uh, you know, tenants within the uh, WebEx teams. Uh, one of them is messaging. So uh, it is a business-grade uh, messaging application built-in. Uh, you can do one-on-one -on -one or you can do team-persistent messaging. Um, it is end-to-end -end encrypted, as I mentioned, you know, whenever you send out the messages or files, uh, they are encrypted end-to-end, -end, whether it's the data be at rest or data be in transit. Um, and uh, you've got applications on mobile, desktop, as well as there is a web application as well available. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, it actually integrates really well with uh, existing business processes like, you know, Salesforce, uh, uh, Trello, and uh, many others. It also does meetings, so it's backed up by uh, WebEx uh, platform as such. So um, obviously, uh, when I talk about meetings, it's pretty much audio, video, and web conferencing all built in, uh, in into the meetings platform. Um, anyone can join, so even third parties, standard based uh, endpoints can actually join uh, these meetings. So say, for example, if you've got a Skype for Business uh, customer, they can actually join those WebEx meetings as well. Uh, Cisco actually bought a company uh, named Akano a few years ago, and uh, Akano really did uh, third party um, uh, standards based uh, uh, you know video meetings uh, integration really well so they've actually virtualized those uh, service offerings uh, uh, within webex and that that's how you normally get those third party um, you know software to actually join webex team meetings um, you can actually control your meeting experience from the application itself and uh, there is an option and an ability to deploy the, the WebEx meetings, uh, WebEx team meetings uh, on-prem as well. So you can actually have a hybrid approach as well. So just from an ordering perspective, uh, 
please ignore the one that says cloud calling because as I mentioned in the a few slides ago, um, cloud calling unfortunately is still not available in Australia, but uh, if you see the offerings at uh, uh, here, uh, pretty much we've got M1 offering and we've got M3 offering. So um, what I mean by M1 offering is uh, if you are just after uh, business class messaging, so just uh, instant messaging uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis or a, a team basis, uh, pretty much that's the offering that you might be going for. Uh, so essentially everything except uh, meetings uh, would be covered in the M1 offering. Um, and uh, if you want to go for WebEx meetings, uh, you go with the M3 offering, so it pretty much covers everything that M1 has to offer, uh, plus uh, WebEx meetings uh, with up to um, you know 200 participants, essentially. And there are some add-on um, add-on add -on offerings as well. So if you are doing um, you know any of the Cisco uh, cloud registered endpoints, uh, you pretty much got room registration license that you can add on. Um, and there are audio audio conferencing options, uh, dialing as well as callback functionalities uh, that you can add on to this, those particular offerings. And there are other WebEx uh, center offerings as well, so event center, training center, uh, and the likes. Uh, they can be added uh, as an add-on option uh, going forward. Let me just quickly go through, you know, how the Teams app looks like, and uh, I'll uh, will pretty much answer any questions that you have after I actually go through the demo. So. This is how it looks like. So pretty much uh, uh, this is the WebEx Teams app, desktop app. So I've actually downloaded a client. Uh, you can also have a web app as well. So if you don't, don't really want to download the client, uh, you can definitely do that. But on the, on the left, you can see here that um, um, all, all, those, all, all the options available here are pretty much uh, the spaces that I've got. So what I mean by spaces is it's essentially a virtual meeting room. So you know, you can have one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation or you can have a team conversation, so having more than two people participating within a, within a conversation. Let me just quickly open up uh, one of the space that I already have uh, within this uh, application. Um, so it, it, it's as simple as just basically searching for uh, a specific uh, uh, space or uh, a virtual team, uh, virtual uh, uh, meeting room. Um, if I just cancel, you can see you know there are a lot of uh, spaces that I have participated on. So uh, it could be handy just to have a quick search option available, and it, it's really fast as well. So if I click on that uh, space. Uh, here you can see that uh, I've got a you know an activity uh, workspace uh, that I can click on, um, and I've got a lot of different activity workspace that I can actually perform. So uh, here I can see that uh, you know there are some instant messaging that I've actually uh, done and communicated within uh, our internal team, internal Cisco team. Um, I can just click on the message and I can just start typing, uh, uh, start typing. I can actually do the attachment as well. So pretty much I can uh, uh, go forward and attach a specific document. Um, all document types are supported. So pretty much you can just uh, select a specific uh, um, you know, document and uh, I can open. And uh, if I just say a big share, uh, Prezo, uh, it would just basically send it off to to the to the wider team. I can also take a screenshot as well, so it does a screen capture really well as well. Uh, it's quite handy. Um, I've also got uh, if if I just click on the activity UX once again, uh, I got the ability to have a look at you know what uh, you know what are the internal people that are present within the organization. So. I click on people and I can see a list of all the people that I am collaborating on. I can actually add people as well. So, um, you know, if uh, a person external to our organization wants to be added, I can just, all I need is just an email address. Uh, there's no complex federation that is required in this case. It's all uh, powered by uh, Cisco's WebEx 
cloud architecture. All I have to do is just basically grab that email address, uh, just uh, uh, put it here and press enter, and that particular person has got access to uh, this specific space. Um, if I go back and have a look at uh, the meeting tab, so I can actually do an instant meeting. So if I press on call, it would send out a video call to all the participants that are actually present in this particular space. But if I want to have a scheduled meeting, I can definitely do that by just clicking on the meetings. And uh, um, you know, it has got a it has got an Outlook integration. So the moment I click on create meeting invite, um, it would pretty much open up uh, it would pretty much open up uh, an Outlook uh, meeting invite. And all I have to do is just basically select the start uh, time and uh, uh, start time uh, and, and the date. And once I click on send, it would automatically create uh, a, a scheduled meeting for me. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but then also, uh, also you can see the meeting information. Uh, if you have got a video system device, so uh, pretty much uh, you can you can actually uh, join. Um, this meeting, uh, you can join. You can join the WebEx meeting uh, team meetings uh, by dialing into this uh, uh, CPURI address as well. Um, I can also do uh, whiteboarding. So, uh, you know, if you've got uh, Cisco um, WebEx board or Cisco DX80 or 70, uh, you can actually do whiteboarding, native whiteboarding as well. Or um, even on the WebEx uh, Teams application on your uh, smartphones or tablet devices, uh, you can pretty much do the white whiteboarding as well. Um, I can also have a look at uh, you know all the files that have been shared in this particular space. So as you could as you could see, uh, there's been a little bit of activity going on uh, within this particular space uh, uh, by our colleagues. Uh, that have actually shared, you know, different presentation within the team. So everything is uh, easily accessible just uh, within a single pane of uh, application as such. Um, there are third-party integrations available as well, as I mentioned. So if you just want to have a look at that, um, all you need to do is just go to the apphub.webex.com. I'm going to link this uh, URL uh, in the chat session as well so that uh, you guys can refer um, after the session. But yeah, that, there's quite a uh, quite a rich integration of third-party business applications, as, as you could see. It's actually categorized into you know different categories. Uh, so if you're looking for a productivity tool, you can click on that and just uh, select a specific uh, thing. So uh, some of the uh, business applications may actually require subscription for those services. But as long as you have su subscription services. Um, it's uh, pretty much a simple integration that you can go for, for with. Um, also, uh, from a search perspective, you know you can search specific content. Or you can search specific people. You can also see, you know, if someone has actually mentioned uh, me, I can actually have a look at, uh, you know, that specific uh, segment as such. Uh, I can also flag a specific message so that you know if I want to have a look at that message at a later stage, uh, all I need to do is just click on flag for following, and it would automatically appear in the um, in, in the search field here. Um, and uh, it obviously has got a calendar integration with your. Uh, uh, obviously, you need uh, some kind of hybrid deployment, but. Uh, um, it has got uh, integration with uh, Microsoft Exchange. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know Office 365 as well as uh, uh, Google Google Apps as well. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, but the, the last thing that I really wanted to show is uh, you know you can actually rename the space as well. Uh, you can actually lock the space. So if you don't really want to invite any, uh, you know, any additional people, uh, you can just pretty much lock the space. Uh, and uh, you know, as I mentioned, the integration and the bots are definitely one that you can add on just to optimize your workflow as well. I think that's pretty much it uh, from. Um, an application demo perspective. And as I mentioned, you know. 
the same look and feel is available when you download this app on your smartphones as well as tablets. Um, it, it's ex exactly same, similarly optimized for uh, you know those those devices as well. So, do we have any questions? Uh, I'm just going to quickly just, check uh, on the check the uh, chat box name. there. See if any have popped sure. up. Cool. Let me just quickly check it. Uh, so I think uh, Bruce has asked. So this is like Yammer plus Skype for Business. Um, well, yeah, so if you have seen uh, Microsoft's uh, recent offering Teams, Microsoft Teams, um, it's similar to Microsoft Teams. It's similar to Microsoft Teams, uh, uh, but yeah, it does, uh, I mean, if you really look from a Microsoft Teams perspective, um, there's quite a bit of uh, complexity that's involved as far as I'm aware. I mean, like, you have to have pretty much all your workloads like, um, uh, you know, Exchange, uh, uh, SharePoint, and all those other applications uh, are pretty much uh, cloud-centric. So you cannot have, like, a hybrid-based deployment. Uh, but, yeah, it, it is pretty much like um, Microsoft Teams, similar to Microsoft Teams, uh, but uh, once again, it's targeting, um, you know, simplicity as opposed to a little bit of complexity that actually comes with um, Microsoft Teams. I'll also have a look at, uh, let me have a quick look at Q&A. Doesn't seem to be a Q&A. Okay, so there, there was another question of how well does it integrate uh, with MacBook? Do we have any specific plugin or requirements for the devices? Yeah, so pretty much all you have to do is just uh, uh, go to the App Store and download uh, WebEx Teams, and uh, or you can even use the web version of, uh, of WebEx Teams. Um, so it's it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much an application that you have downloaded from the from the App Store on MacBook. So another question was, uh, it's easy to set up and requires less. Uh, sorry, I'm not getting. Uh, so licensing point of view, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much it's uh, much more simplistic in terms of uh, ordering. So based on your end user requirement, you can either go with M1 offering, which just pretty much provides you with uh, um, you know, business messaging functionality. Uh, but then if you want to add any of the meetings functionality, you go with M3 offering, uh, which pretty much goes, uh, provides you with messaging plus meetings uh, um, offering. And I'll take one more question and uh, we'll, we'll answer any other questions that are left, uh, uh, left uh, during the end of the session. Um, I want to sell a WebEx board to a customer for them to invite internal external participants. Do I need to purchase WebEx Express room license and then the team license? So yeah, that's right. So essentially, um, you, well, WebEx board would be just an endpoint device as such. Um, you would still need some form of uh, uh, WebEx Teams subscription in order to host a meeting. So you would have a WebEx board uh, plus the cloud registration license that would enable WebEx board to have all the, you know, all the Teams functionality, like, you know, um, whiteboarding, um, wireless sharing, as well as video conferencing. And then you would have uh, a Teams license, essentially. Okay, so, uh, yeah, please uh, have your questions being posted. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll surely monitor all those questions in the Q&A and the chat panel. I'm going to pass it off to Arun to, uh, to go through the Cloud Marketplace portal. And uh, Arun, over to you. Yeah, okay. So let me just quickly open up. Back to the slides. Yep. There you go. I'm just going to open up. That's it. 
presentation. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Rob Fitch. So uh, it's, it's a room back now. I'm just going to quickly take you through the Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace, just an introduction. As uh, Rob Fitch quite uh, rightly pointed out earlier in the session, basically we're going through a rebranding exercise on the marketplace. So currently we are still branding as Cisco Spark. We're in the process of getting that amended and we're going through a current upgrade on the marketplace to the latest version, which is version 7.4. Once that upgrade has happened and the updates have happened in early August, you will then see uh, the branding of Cisco Spark uh, removed and you'll see uh, therefore instead uh, Cisco WebEx Teams instead. So just bear with us over the next few weeks while we go through that transition but uh, we will be uh, more, more consistent with the messaging quite soon. Just to uh, go quickly through the slides, um, for those of you that haven't seen it before, I will just uh, give you a quick overview of what the marketplace looks like. I think we've already sort of covered really more about the products, but just so you're aware, with Cisco Spark, uh, we do have the ability to look at the uh, virtual rooms. Each of the components that Rutledge has already covered, so I probably won't go into too much detail around there. When you first go into the marketplace, you'll have the ability to, bit, to buy uh, two products, specifically the Cisco Spark M1 and the Cisco Spark M3. Both of those options are available either as a monthly subscription or they're actually an annual subscription based on an annual upfront commitment. Those are both based on a per user basis and the price on the marketplace uh, on the monthly for the Cisco Spark M1 is $7.30 for the monthly cost, and the annualized cost for the same subscription is $75.31. And for the M3, which is uh, the more comprehensive offering, we're looking at the monthly cost of $28.70 and the annual SKU cost of $300.66. When you actually go on the marketplace, you would buy either of the two options. You'd either go for the monthly or the annual SKU just by selecting on the radio button on the left-hand side. And then from there, you'll be able to select either the monthly SKU or the annual. And uh, we've actually gone there for an example of just the one user, so you can see the look and feel. You'll see there the prices are, the price is $7.30. That's your price is obviously one of our, our partners. If uh, you're actually wanting to quote the retail price, you'll see the $7.30 can quote, quote back to the list price at $10.43. And the difference, of course, is uh, your normal resale margin. From there, I've also included the options around the annual SKUs as well, which I touched on just in the previous slide. And you'll see there very quickly when you start to getting into the annual license around the M3, the margin can be quite significant at nearly $130. So it does very quickly add up, and that's just based on uh, that one user scenario. Obviously, once you get a bit of scale and you get a number of people in the organization using it, very quickly that can actually get reasonably profitable. You'll see that we actually currently have a current offer on uh, WebEx Teams. So if you buy on the marketplace, uh, you'll actually get 30 days for free. Uh, obviously, if you have more questions about how that works and the details around that, you can feel free to contact me directly or any of our sales team here, and the details of that will include, obviously, in the presentation. If you've not been on the marketplace before, uh, you're new to the Ingram Cloud Marketplace, to actually set yourself up as a Cisco partner and now to therefore procure the Cisco uh, product, for the first time you'll actually need to go into our dashboard which is called the Reseller Control Panel or the RCP for short. This is where you actually go in, it's kind of like the back end system of the marketplace. It's really more of an administration portal to allow you to uh, make administrative, ch administrative changes. Also, for example, if you've got subscriptions and you're on the multi SKU, for example, and you'd like to increase the quantity from five users to perhaps six, you've already provisioned that particular service, but you're reducing your quantity of users. That is all provisioned and changes are made through the reseller control panel. Also with the RCP, you have the ability to look at information such as uh, customer usage, uh, billing information, and obviously uh, things like renewal of those subscriptions on the annual SKUs, for example. Also going through there, if you actually go in as a first time user on the marketplace to buy Cisco, you go on the left hand side in the reseller control panel, you click on the collaboration piece, which is highlighted in blue on the left hand side here. 
And then from there, you would then go into Cisco settings. Yep. Okay. And then under collaboration, where it says uh, the DISD validated RAM, that is actually your Ingram Micro account number. This is not related to your customer, this is actually yours as our partner. That you just need to enter for the very first time. Once you've done that and that has been saved, you obviously won't need to do that again. It's a validation for the first time to actually resell the Cisco product. Once you've done that, you'll then be able to go straight back into the marketplace and provision any additional services, whether that be for Cisco or any of the other items that we have on the marketplace, including obviously some of the complementary solutions that we have, and they're all available through the front end of the marketplace. Just next page down. Certainly if you have questions, sometimes if you're using a new tool can be quite new to people, so you know, we're always here to help. Uh, my sales team are uh, based in Sydney. Uh, there's a, a main line here to contact. So you can contact us directly at that email address you can see there. Or we've got a direct line with an inbound queue uh, based in Sydney on 02-9381-6735. That will take you into the sales team. That's not the support line. That's to the sales team. And they'll be able to help you around navigating any questions that you may have around the marketplace or should you have any issues around doing that first provisioning to allow you to purchase through the portal uh, as a Cisco partner. Okay, that was all I had to cover today. Rufus, do we have any more questions that have come through? Uh, no, I think pretty much uh, most of the questions we've actually answered verbally. And uh, there was one that uh, one of the one well, of the questions was uh, whether the past conversation history can be extracted of the Cisco space. Yeah, it, it definitely can be because once again, the messaging is uh, completely persistent. So any past messages that has been uh, already present within the space, yeah, you you definitely can just uh, easily do easily view that by just scrolling. So to give you an example, uh, pretty much this is how it would look like. So if I just wanted to um, Search or just go for any of the any of the messages that were started from uh, where, where the space was created. Pretty much, I can I can definitely have all those messages. And as you could see, um, it was initially this space was initially created in May 2018. So obviously, uh, we are in July, a couple of months down the track, and still I can see all the messages that actually were originated. So uh, yeah, definitely can, you can you can do that. And do we have some more questions? Yep, I think, I think we, we've got a few more questions. So let me just quickly have a say. Uh, what if the customer made a mistake and need to cancel the order? What is the grace period? Um, so that that's actually vendor specific. I'm not yeah, I'm sure um, what the timeline is for Cisco. Yeah, we that there probably is, there have is. to check with our PMs, but uh, I guess, um, you know, yeah, we, we probably have to check with PM to see, you know, what the grace period is. I, I think, um, unfortunately, once the order is placed and is processed, I don't think uh, we can actually refund or or what you can do is that you can actually do the trial and see whether, like, Basically, you can get a 30-day trial. Uh, you can trial out the product and see whether it's the right fit for you. And um, uh, once the trial expires, you can then actually go into uh, into a paid offering as such. And we also do have the option of the monthly SKU as well. So if it's uh, perhaps a project-based requirement or something like that, rather than the full 12-month commitment, there is some flexibility around picking the monthly SKU, but um, obviously the, once the service yeah. has been provisioned, there is typically a billing process related to that purchase. Yeah, and then there is a freemium offering available as well, but it's quite limited in terms of you know how many participants you can have within a space. Obviously, there's no meetings functionality present in that uh, scenario if you go for a freemium offering. But yeah, you definitely can uh, ask for a trial, and uh, we can give you a 30-day trial. Um, and within those 30 days, um, I mean, once you uh, once you go for uh, the trial and uh, you know get get an understanding of you know how the product works, you definitely can get get it converted into a paid offering, either M1 or M3. 
just okay. quickly checking on Do we any have other any more questions? Uh, Just while I'm uh, just checking that, of course, as a participant in uh, the webinar today, after the webinar, we'll be sending you a link uh, to uh, the recording that we've made today. Should you obviously have any uh, further questions that have come up or if you need any additional support, you can contact myself, Rob Vich, or any of the cloud sales team, and we'd be more than willing to uh, help you around any questions that you may have or any support that you may require from us. And I'll send, uh, I'll just basically send my email address as well, just in case if someone wants to get any technical pieces, uh, information regarding the product or, you know, how the product works or, um, uh, any any uh, specific technical inquiries as such? Okay, so I think we're about there. So thank you everybody for participating today in our webinar. Uh, we obviously appreciate the, the time you've taken this afternoon and of your day to listen in. Uh, should you have any questions down the track, feel free to reach out to us. And I'll end it there. Thank you everybody for joining. Thanks everyone.